Doug, it's great to be here with you at the Napa Institute Principled Entrepreneurship Conference. And obviously you're known as a great entrepreneur and your family, you come from a legacy of entrepreneurs. So thank you so much for being here with us. Well, it's an, it's an honor to be at the part of this conference and to have a chance to talk to you. Let's talk about what philanthropy actually can do. <laughs> like I mentioned, you come from a line of community builders. Right. How did you take that on? How, how was that passed on to you through your family? Well, it, it, was a, it was a tradition that, uh, that my parents had and that they talked about a lot. So very early on in the marriage of my, my mother and father, uh, you know, before they were successful in any level, there was a decision to tithe. And, and that was what was going to happen. And they told us that story often about that was their decision, that was an expression of their faith, whatever wealth or success they had, they were going to do that. And then over the years, they became very blessed to continue to do that at, at higher and higher levels uh, and with greater activity and with greater you know, levels of engagement in the community uh, because they had the capacity and the ability uh, to do that. And so that sort of uh, value that, that it's more than tradition because it was, it was who they were, it was an expression of their belief system mm -hmm. and, and they engaged us in it and they, they were deliberate in wanting to pass that value down and express to us why they gave. Um, it wasn't out of guilt, it wasn't out of some negative sense, it was out of celebration for God's gifts to them and, and they felt that that was their stewardship responsibility to engage in, in the community. So they began to work a lot uh, in those areas and that's kind of how uh, that tradition has happened for, for uh, our family and a lot of us in the, in the Grand Rapids, Michigan area. You talk about engagement, it's not just cutting checks. There's so much more to it than that. It, it can be cutting checks, but I think there's a lot more to it than that because <laughs> it's people. And, and, and what you're trying to do is walk with somebody. It, it, you know, at, at a certain level, okay, it's a basic need, it's a meal, it's something like that. But beyond that, you're trying to create opportunity for somebody who, uh, you know, who, who isn't being served in, in, in potentially a traditional way. Somebody who's, who's, who didn't have a, a mom and dad who helped them, who didn't have you know, access to, you know, to, you know, to, to, to people or to, uh, uh, to services to, to give them an opportunity to move forward. So what you're trying to do is kind of fill a gap that, mm -hmm. that maybe somebody missed and that's personal. And, and so you gotta try to find a way to do that. Now you do it through charities and you do it through organizations, but you need to have an idea of, of who you're working with and why you're doing what you're doing. And, and then try to connect the dots at the end to say, are we doing it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because there's a lot of philanthropy that can have a negative result. It can create dependency. It can create you know other sorts of circumstances where 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 people don't you know where you're not grabbing hands and helping each other. Yeah. Uh, and, and so you got to be careful. And so that's what we're trying. And, and it's hard. And, and so we're we're spending a lot of time you know, in in our work trying to think through that. What are the right results? How do we do this effectively? How do we do it so it really helps somebody? How do we do it in a manner consistent where where we believe in them? Consistent. That they with are your special, values. unique, valuable people. They're just in a tough spot right now, and we're gonna we're we're gonna try to have a relationship where we can move through that to get to a better place. Faith drives you, but also a believe in American principles. Sure. Good America, as I like to call it, <laughs> and and that uh, the foundational guts of this country had something special about it. Yeah, yeah. How is that impacting these conversations? Well, it, it's vital to it as well because many of these things we live, you know, not only in the world that God created, but we live in a country where where we have chosen and created, you know, over uh, the, the years a system of government to to try to create an environment for human flourishing for mm -hmm. us to do better for us as a society to perform better, to help each other, to, to generate wealth and prosperity, but also cohesion and create a culture that is, that is welcoming and nourishing. Uh, uh, and so, so I'm, I'm very you know, committed to how looking around the world and in our business, you've been able to see how other countries approach it and, and, and that the principles uh, of the founding of America, in my opinion, are, are pretty good ones. We, we've kind of made a decision that we're gonna do a majority of our work locally mm. and we're gonna invest in, you know, uh, in, in more of the local community in a variety of ways, as I said, through business investment as well as philanthrop uh, philanthropy. And, and so uh, the further you get away from that, the harder it is to be personally engaged. Mm -hmm. and, and so we wanted to be personally engaged and so to do that, you need to stay a little closer to home. 
What worries you the most when you look at the changes over the last decade in our country? What's the thing that keeps you up at night? <laughs> well, there's a lot if of things. There's that, only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, yeah there, there's a lot of things that, that, that keep me up at night. But for, for me, it's really going back to the, the foundational principles. And, and it's going back to the, the first thing where people are losing an understanding of who they are. And that's only answered with a faith solution. You know, that, that you're a child of God. You were put here for a purpose. You're special. You're unique. You, you have gifts and talents. You're not just a number. You're, 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 you, know, you are special. Pope Francis talks a lot about multi-generational engagement. Yeah. And you described that a little bit um, earlier, talking about your parents, talking sure. about legacy, and that your identity and your faith come from knowing what your parents taught you and what your community taught you. How has multi-generational engagement not engaging in the throwaway culture of, I'm gonna put my parents away somewhere, yeah. how has that affected you in your life? Well, again, it's what, you know, it's what my folks taught uh, us and it's everything, you know, spending time with our family, with our kids, with my nieces and nephews, with, you know, w with younger people uh, when you can. I may not understand what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I may not get the, the phrases or the words that they use. In fact, I often don't. Um, I wouldn't recommend them. Yeah, but there's a, but there's a, there's a few points of connection with, with my kid, with, with our kids and their friends and, and, and those sorts of things. But we have worked very diligently as a family so if you kind of bring it into the family unit mm -hmm. context, we have worked very diligently about transitioning those values and, and talking about you know, where, you know, where my parents got their values from their parents and how that was passed down, what they, how they expressed their beliefs mm -hmm. and how we're trying to express our beliefs and, and how we, we hope and we trust they will you know, see as a great way for them to express you know, their beliefs and, and that they'll share the belief and value system that, and, and the faith that, that we have uh, grown up with in our family. But that's not gonna happen just out of the blue. It's gonna happen because you're gonna have diligent conversations, you're gonna have specific times where you talk about these things, you're gonna write about it, you're gonna put it on the table, you're gonna debate it in certain instances or certain cases, um, but at the end, I can't live my kid's life and, and so they're gonna to have to make their decision, but I've gotta do the work that I can to at least prepare them you know, and, and offer a pathway for them uh, so they can make a good decision. When you think about the young people whose phrases are hard to understand sure. <laughs> and the state of our culture, a lot of people get very, very depressed, but I'm interested in what gives you hope. What makes you hopeful for the future? Well, I, I'm hopeful every time you see somebody doing something, uh, something good. There are so many good stories. There are so many people doing things in the world where they're, they're sharing, they're giving, they're helping, they're, they're sacrificing for others, for, for their kids, for their neighbors, for other people in this world. You see that on a regular basis. I, I, I'm involved with our, 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 our local hospital and you watch, you, you watch this, the, 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 you know, the professional staff you know, uh, you know, the doctors and nurses and, and, and all the support staff as well, the administrators and everyone that makes this hospital, they're running 24 seven, and especially from what they've gone through recently, sacrificing so much to help other people. And you just look and go, wow, there's that sense of humanity. There's that, that spirit where, where people are, are, are making tremendous sacrifices and, and they're committing so much to helping others. Uh, and so that gives me hope. I'm so grateful for the time with you. Thank you so much, Doc. Good, thank you so much, I appreciate it.